In this video, we're gonna talk about Sisu Cinema Robotics. All right, real quick, you're watching Video Brand. Special thanks to our sponsors for making this NAB coverage possible. Massive, Metricool, Adspective, Vestigit, and OpenReel. All right, back to the video. What's up, everyone? We're here with Sisu Cinema Robotics, uh, and we're gonna talk about this awesome robot right here. So kind of tell me what we're looking at. So this is our uh, Sisu Cinema Robotics C20 Cinema Robot. It is uh, our most popular model. It is the one that uh, we're just deploying all over the world, really. We've got some in the UK, uh, all over the US here, some in Asia, kind of really taking the world by storm. Um, and it's uh, we're paired with Magic Box to show what our robots can do in the virtual production world to kind of revolutionize what filmmaking can be. In essence, it's a, uh, it's a motion control system that's a little bit more intuitive than people are used to, a little bit faster than people are used to, and it's highly mobile. Can you kind of give a baseline? So if you don't know much about robots, I don't, I don't know much about robots, yeah. but like, how does this compare for maybe a traditional, like if you have a, a cinema robot and how you program it, and then what's the comparison of like how you operate uh, this one? Great question. So what really sets us apart from our competitors or from the market in general is like, David mentioned is our speed on set. We are much quicker to program than um, other cinema robots. So for example, instead of uh, someone who has an engineering degree typing away on a keyboard behind a wall of monitors, it's someone who has just uh, a tablet in one hand and what we call a wand in the other hand, and they're standing shoulder to shoulder with the director um, setting the keyframes and setting the shot in real time with the director's real time feedback. So it just makes production a lot faster because you're not having to have the director try to relay their vision to someone, them going to a computer, typing away on a keyboard, coming back to the director, hoping that that's what they want to do, and then making adjustments uh, afterwards. You're making all those changes in real time with real time feedback from the director. Yeah. And in all honesty, the difference is always going to lie in the interface, mm -hmm. and our interface is proprietary, it's unique, it is very different from what exists on the market right now, and because of that, you don't necessarily need to have certifications and coursework in order to be able to effectively utilize this. It's the kind of system you can take, put directly into a DP's hands, let them modify what they're seeing through the lens, mm. and then you click one button and you've got an adjusted program, you've got a modified motion control uh, path. Nice. And so you mentioned so. some certifications for other models, but like what kind of training or onboarding or understanding would you need to, to operate this? Yeah, in all honesty, we've had robotics owners that have cracked this thing open before receiving any training and begun doing spec shoots with it and things like that while they were waiting on us to arrive. But in general, the structure that we follow is if you get your hands onto one of these systems through a RAS program, which is basically like a lease, or through a direct purchase, then we'll fly somebody out to you and spend three days just running through the ins and outs of the system. Um, we feel it's really important, uh, not just for the success of our customers, but for brand image that we know and they know the ins and outs, the specific use cases they're gonna be applying and, and how to best navigate this. To piggyback on what David was saying is um, that those three days that we come out and train people, after those three days, they're able to start getting shots. They're, start, uh, they're able to start um, creating content immediately after those three days. And then within another maybe two, three weeks, they're ready to go live in front of clients. Uh, we're the only motion control robot solution that can do that. Uh, when we typically do a demo or a um, go to a trade show, uh, we're the, again, we're the only motion control robot out there that after just two to three minutes of a tutorial of, hey, this is how our robot works, this is how you control it. We'll then put those controls directly into the hands of the people at the convention and let them write a program real quick because our, our robot and our software is that intuitive that they can do that. Cool. And I think you mentioned before, uh, also the size or the portability. You can move it around, right? Yeah, more easily. mobility. Like, I'm looking at this, it is big, but. Uh, yeah, but. no, it, it, it is big, because it's, it's, a, it's a robot that has a, a six and a half foot reach. So it is big, but we've tried to make it, again, as simple and as quick to use on set. So on the bottom of the robot here, underneath, we actually have heavy duty casters 
that uh, make it really simple and easy to roll around on a set. Mm. So if you need to reposition the robot to a different uh, location on set, or even roll it onto a lift gate for transport, you can do that really simply and easily. And then when you get to the place where you want it to, you're set up, you just screw the feet back down and you're ready to shoot your next shot. And then this will fit through a standard doorway. We've designed it specifically for that. So that way, you know what? It's easy to move around. It's easy to get where we need to go without having the constraints of um, a forklift or uh -huh. any additional yeah. equipment. Or like you said it and they're kind of stuck where you put it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, one of the common use cases we've run into a couple of times and something I've heard from people that have actually done shoots for major brands, you can take this system and this system has been taken onto a set, a shot has been captured, it has been jacked up, rolled, a next shot has been captured within seven minutes. Right. And that may mean a lot to some, it may mean very little to others, but... I mean, seven the, minutes for a new shot is still pretty yeah, fast, regardless of a robot being involved. In the yeah. world of MoCo, that's, right. that's almost unheard of. Yeah, you want to walk me through what we're uh, So, we're So what's at. happening, the, again, the nice thing about using a cinema robot is the repeatability. Mm. So it's going to do the exact same thing every single time. So in a situation like this where it's like a step and repeat type situation, mm -hmm. people are coming in, they want to experience the cool stuff that that, uh, that Magic Box and that Sisu can do. They come in here, we, set the, we create the program, and then new people come in, Mike runs the program, goes through its, uh, its, its pathway and it runs the program, and then when they leave, they get a, a video of themselves in the, uh, in this virtual environment, which is really, really neat. We've been doing this at trade shows for a while now, and the thing that makes our, our robot so unique is, I know we keep saying it, but is how quick it is to program. So an example of this, last year we were at Cinegear, yeah. and we had a really cool LED volume wall, and people had lightsabers, and they were doing lightsaber battles, which was really fun and neat, everyone loved it. But then on day two of the, shoot, of the show, this dad comes in with his five-year-old son. And he wants to do a lightsaber battle with his five-year-old son. So the way that we had programmed the robot is for two adults, not a tiny little five-year-old. And so what we were able to do is in a matter of, I think it was four minutes we timed it because it was fun. Uh -huh. We timed it and within, it was like four or five minutes, we were able to completely rewrite the entire program for a little person. <laughs> because this dad wanted to have a cool yeah. Star Wars-y lightsaber battle with his son. And so we were able to do that, whereas a different motion control uh, solution, it would have taken 45 minutes to an hour to do that, at least. And we were able to do it in five minutes. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to check all of our NAB videos over here in our NAB playlist, and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.